this video we're going to design a simple project to our specifications and output the manufacturing files so we can build it. It's a short overview so you can see how simple and quick the process is. We've also got detailed guidance on all these steps elsewhere. So let's assume we've been to see a potential customer and we've got our design idea, all the project dimensions, we know what material we want to use and what hardware to build it with. So first we'll click on the new cabinet icon to start a new design in cabinet mode. We'll create a box cabinet. We're going to use the dimensions already here, but we could edit them now or later if we wanted. And we've also got a method selected. This manufacturing method is a pre-configured collection of preferences we're going to apply to our project, including the material type, hardware, and the panel construction we want. Let's go with this method. It includes generic materials, Cabaneo panel fittings, and Blum Legra box drawers. Click OK, and we've got the start of our design. Before we go any further, let's view in 3D, and also show side by side the 3D and the edit window. First of all, I'm going to add a shelf. To do that, I click on the inner volume of the cabinet. I can now access in the toolbar a whole range of options, including now add shelves. I'm going to add a single fixed shelf, position it, distance from the bottom, 700 millimeters. So the inner volume's now been split into two. I can click on the bottom volume and now add some drawers. I'm going to select these drawers, which are 550 millimeters deep, and add three. And now in this upper volume, I could use the toolbars, but this time I'll show you a different option. I can right click and in the pop-up menu, access the uprights. I'm going to add one. This time the position is going to be proportional. I want it in the middle, so it's 50% from the left and the right. On the right hand side, I'm going to add a single door, which is the initial option. And I'm going to have it opening from the right. And on the left hand side, add some more shelves. Let's add four shelves here. And finally, now I would like to add a plinth. I'm going to click outside the cabinet in editing mode. And then in the properties menu, I have these external zones to choose from. Uh, there's the plinth option. This will give me a space below the cabinet. I'm going to choose 78 millimeters, which is just right for some cabinet feet I'm going to add later. So you can see this space has appeared. I can click on it. And now I've got the option to add a plinth. Let's put it just at the front and set it back 20 millimeters. So that's our initial design already finished. Let's take a look at the manufacturing output now. I'm going to click on the 3D window, go into print preview, and we can send that image as a PDF to our customer. You can do screen grabs as well of any view you like. Uh, and if I click now, let's close that and click on the edit window and do a print preview from here. This access is the workshop document. Now that includes on this second page, the cut list of all the parts. We also have a costing report based on the material usage and the amount of hardware we've used. So this is a really quick way to get an accurate quote out to your customer. And then after that, we have a plan of every part in the project, including the position of all the hardware. Let's close that. Separately, in the file menu, we can go to Post Processor Export and choose the correct post processor to output part by part CNC files to run our machine. So all this output is available in the fully activated version of the software. But we also have sample output available on the Polyboard download page. So let's make some changes to our design now. Let's change some of the hardware we're using first. Before I do that, in the 3D, I'm going to view in wireframe and zoom in on just a section here of our unit. Here we can see the Cabaneo applied. So I'm going to choose a new manufacturing method now. Click on this icon and change it to this one. Now it's still got, if we look at the details of what's included in that method, all these sub methods show that we still have, in fact, the Blum Legra box draw. We've also got these Axolo cabinet feet and we've got these cam and dowels to replace the Cabaneos. I'm going to click OK to apply it. And we can see those cannon dials have been added to our cabinet. Let's view back in uh, 3D solid render. And we can see those cabinet feet at the bottom as well now. Now we've got some edging applied. We've made that red and blue so it's visually very easy to spot um, and, and check our design. 
We could add a different texture to that if we wanted. In this case, I'm just going to remove the edging completely. So within the manufacturing method, we've got a sub method for edging. If I click on that, I'm actually going to just select this top one, which removes the edging completely. And let's also change the materials. We can do that with the material sub method. Instead, another option is the modify style wand. I'm going to click on that, select the panels. And this material is our facade. You can see the colors currently gray. I'm going to right click and choose this Egger option instead. To add a bit of contrast, let's also select the back material and change that to, let's change it to a generic, this Bianco material. So all the materials have been updated very quickly there. Click OK and we can see the results. Polyboard's quick design libraries include a large range of configurations already set up, but everything can be customized as you want it. Over here in libraries and the sub methods, we can see the full list of all the components of an overall manufacturing method. The fittings links covers the hardware. We've got a materials sub method as well. Edge, the edging we've looked at. Divisions could be used to set back our mobile shelves, say three millimeters from the cabinet front, whilst keeping the fixed shelves flush. We've got some specialist methods here. We've got methods for doors and drawers to define how they're constructed, the slack and so on. And the assembled parts defines frame and panel assemblies. Let's just look at just one now, which is a nice visual one, the cabinet box full, which defines how the carcass is set up. So here, if I turn it round, you can see in this setup, we've got the bottom recessed. We've got here uh, some tenons. If I turn it round, you can see the back's recessed, just ever so slightly 10 millimeters. Here we have a setup with um, mitered panels as well. So there's lots already in the libraries, but you can set it up exactly how you want it to. Let's add a final set of design changes now. First, I'd like to add a sloping top. If I select the top panel, I've now got, again in the properties menu, a width slope option. I'm going to set that to minus 150 millimeters. That gives me a slope from the left to the right going upwards. And let's say we've got some pipe work we want to put in behind the cabinet. So we need a cutout. I'm going to click on the unboxing command and let's have the cutout between the top and the back and keep the cut out 100 millimeters. Just click OK. You can see that applied here. And if I turn the 3D round, you can see that the cutout is immediately applied. Now, perhaps your customer decides at the last minute they'd like a design change, some storage alcoves in these shelves. Let's add those now. I'm going to right click on this space and add two uprights and do the same in this volume here. We could just as easily delete this door and add some shelves or, or take the drawers out and put doors, uh, double doors at the bottom. Okay, now lastly, let's say we've made a just a slight error in the dimensions and we want to adjust the width of the unit. I'm going to click outside the cabinet and in the properties menu, change the width so we can see it easily. Let's add 200 millimeters to the width. So now the carcass and all the parts within it automatically resize and the position of the hardware adjusts as necessary too. All the manufacturing files have updated as well. Let's go and have a look at the cutting list. So here the left and the right side parts are, have different height. That reflects the slope we added. And the updated plans also include the exact angle cut to manage that slope too. This video was a quick look at just a few of the features available. There are a lot more possibilities which we cover in the resources on our website. But I hope it's shown you that design and editing is super fast. You can do it with your customer if you want as well. And the output is immediately available. It's dynamically updated as you change your design and 100% accurate every time. Thanks very much for watching.